very good morning and good afternoon to all of you and welcome to the second day of five days capacity building event online training of SARC professional on small mini micro hydro power generation respected instructor and participant this event is organized by SARC energy center and we have invited to iit root key as a Uh, Mr. Pardal, you are mute. Mr. Pardal, your machine has become mute. Oh, yes, sir, yes. Yes, okay. Uh, yesterday, we covered four slots, namely introduction. That was covered by Professor Arun Kumar, where he discussed about the prospect, opportunity, challenge, and categorization, including global context. And in slot two, Site selection and investigation was covered by Sunil Kumar, sir. And in slot three, socio-economic and environmental aspect was covered by Arun Kumar Tyagi. And there was also interaction and discussion and where with some participant actively spoke to Professor Arun sir regarding the some challenge faced by their countries and in fifth slot hybridization and opportunities was covered by Imang Sujan. So today the theme of our session is planning and design. We will start with technical consideration in planning by Professor Arun Kumar sir and after lunch break Professor Bernard Pelican from Austria will be delivering in selection and dimensioning of major component of small hydropower. Then civil engineering aspect of designing will be covered by Professor Mukesh Singhal. Then we have four slot mechanical and electrical component designed by R.P. Saini. Then we will wrap up the session with evaluation. So now I would like to invite Arun Kumar sir to talk on the technical consideration. Sir, please, floor is open. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. And I think good morning to on the eastern side of uh, western side of India. And good morning to uh, good afternoon to the western side eastern side of India. Uh, I would like to talk today about the planning and the aspects and in the planning aspects one of the major thing is uh, the layout. Layout of a project uh, become the key for the planning but why do we do the planning? That's the uh, dollar uh, some, something a big question. Why do we need the planning? Planning we should do a project only single individually or we should do a planning first for the entire basin because we are touching the water. We are touching the natural water, which is a flowing river. And in the flowing river, there are multi stakes under not only the human, not only the animals of uh, ground, but also the animals and the life in the water. So there are multi stakeholders which use the water. So hence, when I do a planning, I must know that what may be happening on the upstream, what is happening in downstream. What kind of chances are there? Where I can do all that? So these are the various aspects of the planning. So I'll be now uh, coming to the uh, presentation mode, and then I will be talking to you about uh, this uh, very general uh, uh, specific to this uh, uh, topic. So technical consideration in planning. Uh, so let's talk about that. So that will be contained that what is the planning and the purpose, then what are the options and when, how to select the sites and then uh, what are the layouts. So that will give me the good layout as I say the key for the planning is the layout and also your overall uh, river basin is the one which we need to talk about it. So it is to the, uh, the so we need to do a systematic time bound Usually shared between the government, social, private sector, some kind of a master plan or regional plan or general plan, whatever we can call it, 
depending on the you know the location what we are talking about it so i i would like to tell you that this is the key of the because this kills you that is a compare menu card you know like if a menu card is there on your table in a restaurant so what do you do you choose out of say 100 dishes you choose two or four so that means and why you do you want to do a priority to that okay you bring this in the first that is the fix that becomes of the taste but here when i do as a priority of a project then i have a menu first of all that what is the entire game what kind of uh, so the very first consideration of choosing a a uh, project for development is that i must know that what are the other choices i must choose one of them best choices to that time to that need to meet that need or at that time what is my best choice so i should also like to tell you that a high to power development projects cannot be done by one sector alone you think that government will do everything no you think that all social uh, you know this foundation will do ngos will do no it's only the private will do actually in a sector of power it is a mixed bag where everybody will like to do that those projects which are quite heavily beneficial maybe you know private sector may like to do or the government may like to do so all depend on the you know the, the environment or the climate or whatever it is uh, so we need to do a kind of a sharing of the development between these stakeholders so i would like to say that is inventory of all possible sites it tells you about i hope that there is some noise somewhere so let me see where the from the noise is if you like to unmute please because i'm going to speak so you will not have a chance to speak right now so all of you please unmute other than me anybody any gentleman or the lady if you want to speak i will give opportunity opportunity for last 15 minutes i will ask you to speak as much as you can so don't so this is my turn to speak i request that uh, you mute yourself so that uh, we can have a, a you know uh, comfortable talk otherwise disturbing obviously nobody likes it okay so uh, in that reference it gives me an inventory of all possible sites it also gives the priority or ranking you know it gives me priority and ranking oh, okay which are the good projects in the beginning you know which are the priority which and on priority basis can be of many reasons it could be priority can be the need based it could be the cost effectiveness based easy to do the base there are many many factors which can be a uh, part of that uh, the priority it gives a cluster approach that means if you are in a region suppose there are some project to develop top 10 projects and there are in particular cluster there are five projects but there are other projects which are dispersely located you may like to do in a cluster because in cluster you will be able to uh, share your infrastructure you will share your maximize you will be able to uh, optimize your uh, cost on this very well because it's a cluster approach and also you will be known what is my financial requirement if i know okay because finances are not available immediately at the same time so finances may be available over the period of time so once i have the inventory i will be knowing that how much money i require at what time and also i require grid to evacuate my power because grid formation grid making is also a challenge it's a big big work because you have not only to bring the money you not only to install but you have to take the clearances before that because most of the time the grid passes through the forest passes through the agricultural field passes through the residential areas where you need to have the concurrence or clearance or permission or land acquisition or uh, right of the way you know you have to acquire those rights and that also takes time and money so for that reason and also if you I, i i if you have a project here i have a line here and i know that there will be many more projects will coming in future so when i uh, put a transmission line i should be able to put the line to take care of all this power not that only my power suppose your project is only 5 megawatt but there are project where 5 megawatt 5 megawatt say the more there are 10 project so the perhaps the capacity i require to carry is 50 megawatt so the, that means my transmission line also has to be strengthened accordingly and i keep this kind of thing in my system this is uh, academically is a flow chart which tells you that 
you need to identify and you have to get the permission for an allotment, we call it, uh, a concession or a license to do the project. And then you need to do the carry out surveys, you need to find head discharge, geology, environment, then prepare a feasibility report. If not feasible, then drop the project. If they're feasible, then you uh, think of doing the project. Uh, then you do the detailed survey investigations, topographical, hydrological, all which I've been told yesterday by uh, Professor Singhal. And then you prepare a field report, then investment decision for execution. So the decision for investment is not one day. It doesn't come here. It doesn't come here. It doesn't come here. So you have done a good work here. So it comes over here where my planning purpose, I may change some planning. It's seeing that I can have different options. Options should be decided here itself. Which option I want to choose. What layout I want to choose. Beyond that, you start spending good money in the investigations. When I say good money, it's not that good money. Maybe 2%, 3% of the entire budget cost. But you start investing. But here is you are hardly putting much money. So your options of layout, your options of choosing a project should be frozen by the time so that you invest it. And then, and when it comes here, you may be, you may go, may not go. May go, may not go. For execution of this project, that all depend on the, the market, electricity market, your financing available, and uh, you know, kind of clearances are, could be available, and requirement of the uh, power. So, all there are several factors which decides about it. A master plan has just said that not necessarily it will be only on the rough river, uh, uh, run of river projects, it's only the uh, run of river projects but also existing dams and canals. All most of the salt countries are bestowed and they're lucky to have irrigation dams and canals, which gives a very good potential for hydropower development. These are the excellent opportunity. In fact, in India, if you place any advertisement for doing a small hydro project on a canal fall or a dam based scheme, dam to a scheme, they are opted like hotcakes. Maybe for one project you will find 30 bidders, 20 bidders. Why? Why is so? Because they are easy to do. Everything is known to you. You know the hydrology, you know the geology, you know the you know kind of infrastructure it has. Everything is known. So they are easy to do the projects. And then you also do some kind of sites for rural education. You need to compile them. You need to prioritize them. And those data can also be placed on through the GIS. You can also place on the GIS platform so that decision taking and uh, is become easy. So these are the, some of the things which are uh, a part of this. In terms of source of information, when you have to do the plan, what will be the source of information from where you will get? Every country has got uh, institutions who maintain this source who maintain this, uh, you know, information, details. Many of them are smartly, but many of them digitally nowadays. Many of them analog only, and the print mode, yeah, and all that uh, happens. But I'd like to say every, every country has got now uh, quite, uh, you know, this information. Uh, the degree of availability in terms of easiness will vary from, you know, country to country, states to states. It all depends upon the things. Even country like Afghanistan, these kind of details are available or should be available digitally or analog. That's the matter of the, you know, uh, you know, readiness of the country. Uh, you see, we have the nodal agencies which does in the renewable energy states that many of our partners are from, uh, you know, many of the partners are from these renewable agency. For example, in Nepal, a uh, small hydro is done by two departments for a smaller capacity. It is done by AEPC, Alternate Energy Promotion you know, uh, Commission or Council. And the second one is then the Department of Electricity and other, uh, uh, other the department which deals with the subject. So there are many, many countries where more than one institution does the work of hydropower development, small hydropower development. And they many times are the zonal wise, sometimes they are regional wise, they are some state wise. Sometimes there are, you know, uh, capacity-wise, that kind of happens. 
they are actually boards like still in uh, uh, Sri Lanka you have CEB, Ceylon Electricity Board, right? Ceylon Electricity Board is still there. So boards are now vanishing, but they are now becoming instead of board, they are becoming you know, companies. They are become companies because of the nature, because of the competition, where transmission, distribution, and generation are now become three independent verticals. They are no more uh, on in trader, you know, trading. So there are many disciplines of our sector which are, uh, you know, uh, which are this, uh, you know, different. So electricity boards are there, but still they get dotted. Like for example, in Sri Lanka, CB is a good source of the data because they have planned, they have a lot of master plans ready when the sector was uh, in, 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 completely in the private uh, government sector. And the Department of Power Departments of the state, like you have in Nepal, Department of Electricity, and in in Pakistan, it used to be Wabda, Water and uh, you know Power uh, Development Authority. They 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 are the one, but now they have some renewable energy agencies also there. Central government and uh, government power companies, they also do have them. Sometimes they do not do it. They have some data. Individuals have a background in such data calcula uh, collections, uh, calculation, survey institutions, like you have. Survey of India, Survey of Sri Lanka, Survey of Nepal, those kind of you know government based they, they provide the uh, digital and digital as well as analog maps, which gives the first thing the forest survey institutions, remote sending institutions, and NATMO. Uh, NATMO is a particular uh, in, uh, is particularly particular to India, but there are thematic is called national atlas and thematic map organizations. So such institutions are out there in many countries and federal government planning department or census data. Census data is also important. And so, and uh, the Ministry of Power, you know, the Ministry of Powers or Department of Powers are the one who are uh, getting into these details. So these are the your source for the data. Uh, run of river sites are uh, implies that there is uh, no storage. Maybe small pond is maybe there, may not be there. For a few minutes, few hours, even a day or two, but they are not reservoir where we store the rainy water completely. We store only for a four days. That power flows there, so it's a philosophy of the runoff river that not a large dams, and they are the one. Uh, they are through the divergent structures. You can see here by divergent. I showed yesterday. Similarly, you can divert the water. You divert the water and make the channel and brings it back. So these are the very simple, uh, you know, sites are there. The canal fall base schemes. Why I'm showing again yesterday, and I, we will keep on showing you these figures. I don't know if we were canal fall, so that give you an idea. The planning of all these different options have got certain uniqueness. For example, a canal fall base scheme or a dam fair, the into schemes has uniqueness because that existing data is there, existing structure is there. Known things are you are you know the things much better than anything else. So whatever the whatever the use those have been constructed, you will be doing that. Okay, these are the you know primary use. They can be primary use and secondary use. For example, irrigation canal and irrigation dam will never release the water for you only. They will release the water whenever they need it. And you will be able to generate electricity whenever the water flows through your system. So that means the priority, the need of the water is for irrigation, and you as a power generator has to be an incidental. So incidental is the one which now you tell me, oh, suppose there is a you have a canal and you thought that canal will have so much of command area, but command area is not able to develop. And there is a water is not required, and that is the time. Yeah, Mr. Wallace, you want to say something? No? Okay, fine. Uh, say so. I have not been able to develop the command, so we uh, then the canal will not be taking the discharge. But you thought that people told you that this canal will be able to raise this much water. So your power projects are under the problem because in a in a dam it was there, it, uh, the dam was there. You were writing water, and water was to release. 
because there was a queue was required, but now queue is not required because irrigation need has not there or command has not been developed. So they will be releasing only that much of water, which could be smaller water. But you plan your project based on this, you know, the entire design queue, but you are getting lesser queue. So your project will be affected. So in the terms of planning, you have to see that what is factual. You should not believe. I would like to repeat the sentence very responsibly. You should not believe what irrigation tells you. Irrigation department tells you completely. You must apply your pinch of salt in that. You must apply your due diligence in that. Your irrigation departments or the irrigation projects are long term investment, long term, you know, the command development and all this happen. I would like to tell you there are many projects, at least in India, I know that those projects suffer their payback on account of that because they are not able to get the promised water because they do not have the command so they don't know to release. But one more thing I would like to tell you especially for the dam toy schemes where the water spills during rainy season. Can you use that water for your power generation? Certainly you can do that. Though if for the they don't want for the irrigation that water because there is a water is not required for irrigation already there is a rain and water is spilling from the dam so can you use for the electricity generation if you have a power plant here yes but then you have to ensure that after the use of your water the water goes back to river because they don't need the water on this side they don't we need the water on the downstream of the uh, dam uh, downstream of the uh, in a downstream and because there is no irrigation demand so there are many times you need to construct such kind of bypassing arrangement or an additional arrangement if you want to utilize the spilled water. So these are the, some of the technical consideration and practical consideration which I do and I tell you there are more than 20 such projects I can see out of you know 200 such projects where people have suffered those people who invested the money they are not applied due diligence on this completely and they invested the money the money back money payback is very slow because of uh, the command has not been developed. Uh, these are the things where uh, so you must know that how much water is flowing in the canal and if you know the water is flowing in the canal you can always uh, you know bank up on you can put that machine here or you can put it through a bypass. Normally irrigation department never likes to be disturbed. No irrigation department would like to get disturbed because of your power small hydro power and yesterday I mentioned about a Sri Lanka case they said in Sri Lanka if you see canals and dams please don't come to me a private sector don't come to me I will handle myself because for irrigation is a top priority compared to the power generation and irrigation normally consider you as a outsider and then it's globally not don't worry on, on Sri Lanka Sri Lanka is just I mentioned a case but you need to take government into confidence. You need to take the irrigation department into confidence. You have to build such kind of relation. I'm not talking individually. I'm talking policy wise where irrigation department should also take part in that. And if there are any concern of irrigation department are there, they need to be addressed religiously. They need to be addressed positively. If that they don't, they are not addressed positively what they will do they will kill your project because by the priority irrigation is a priority and in the name of the priority they will try to put all kind of hurdles for you they will say and this happens everywhere so while we are planning i would like to say please do not ignore the concern of the irrigation department what could be the concern concern could be that their sedimentation should not happen in their canals or dams on account of you. There should not be surges on account of you. If the surges are there in the water, then canal line may get away, you know, may get damaged. And also don't demand the water for yourself because if they don't need it, you need to tackle it accordingly. You need to forget about that, that water will come for you only. Or you should have arrangement 
if that they don't want the water but the water is still available in plenty then you allow them to uh, downstream to pass through back to the you know river so that water which is coming through the spillway is able to you are able to generate electricity these are very simple things which are done in the for the planning purpose now here i have prepared a very nice uh, i have four sketches here and you can correlate yourself in there all four possibilities are there i have a fall okay then i buy make a diversion channel and i put a power hose to bring it here the slope of the moment i am going for a longer rope i am going to have a small change in the slope but anyway i can do that it's a very simple case if you are if you want to do a project here normally if this is possible only when is a new project or the water is available only for 6 month and then you want to do it and in 6 month time which is the water is not available you want to construct completely that's right but they don't believe in you they will not believe in you uh, they, because this is a very common thing happens uh, between a private sector and uh, the government sector but this is a very good case where if it is a new canal is being built you have a fall you built a power house you built a side wall and that is very easy to do yesterday uh, our one of the participant mentioned about i think it's mr suman uh, mentioned about that that uh, uh, there is a canal and they want to develop a project here well certainly you can develop it but the moment you put a machine here you must put a bypass also so if you if you can provide a bypass there then no question no doubt should be there and i i will send you individually some pictures of such installations because india india pakistan sri lanka bangladesh uh, and to some extent nepal and to some extent afghanistan has uh, is blessed with a canal network a lot of canal network so that network helps you a lot so and also if you have falls some falls are there are in a rapid one two three in a short distance so not necessarily that you develop at every site you can plant them together you can club them together like if i if i have a fall like this so i can put together and i can put a power plant here so what will happen all this will be silted up but you have a power plant here you by combining falls you will be increasing the height suppose this is our fall is of 1 meter each so when you combine this become 1 plus 1 plus 1 become 3 meter so develop a 3 meter power plant is much cheaper than developing three 1 meter plant ah uh, Yes, Mabu. I will be giving the time if you like at uh, uh, in a discussion part of that. We can uh, do that. Community concern. Yes, we can uh, talk it even today because it's a part of planning process. So when I will give the time for discussion, I will come back to you, Mabu Suman. Please. Okay. Uh, so you can see here, and also there are distributaries which goes there. There are many distributaries takes part here. There are, and these are also some falls is there, so we can do this kind of. I can make a regulator and I put a power house, and this I can when I don't have the water. When the power is not running, the water is still can continue to there. These are uh, many uh, many such projects are there. Many such projects are happening in the country, and these will be two meter, three meter, one meter, four meter kind of falls will be there on the distributaries. and this gives excellent opportunities for developing small hydro and i would like to say these are available in most of our countries where have a canal network now all these possibilities of canal fall if i talk about india they are hot cake the moment you advertise for public private people come forward oh this is beautiful because people know that how much water is going to flow they know about what is kind of the geology there your technical condition what kind of capacity there and then you know it's a very small structure you have to can bring the machine 
and you can install it easily. So that becomes very easy. In terms of dam toe, I just mentioned to you dam toes are the way where dams have been built up for some other purposes and where you can put a power plant on this toe. So that device is created basically to regulate the stream flows and the power is located at the toe of the dam and that utilizes the discharge passing through that you can see here. And then water goes back. So not necessarily the power will go back to the river that will go to the canal irrigation. You can see here this is a power project in Madhya Pradesh where one is going on the right bank, another is going there. Can you see here? It's small, another one is right bank. This is a 90 megawatt, and this is a 50 megawatt because this canal is a smaller canal, and this is a bigger canal. Here you can see that on the both bank there is a dam to project which have been commissioned. Right? So that dam has not been built up for this purpose. The dam is built up for providing the water for the irrigation, and this is the way project is completed. Now, to plan an activity in a greenfield area, greenfield area means I don't have a canal, I don't have a dam, existing dam, I have a simple river flowing, you know, simple river flowing, and there I wish to develop. These are the scheme which you'll find mostly in the hilly zone, in the hilly region of any country, or even a flatter one, but not very flat like Bangladesh, a major land, not like our Calcutta or our, you know, Patna, those areas, but mostly where the river is moves confined with the boundaries, which is the, you know, like you have some kind of, uh, you know, the hilly zone. If I want to do a, a plan on this, you can see I look at the maps, a yeah, topical map, which are normally scale of 150,000. And I would like to say in every country of our participation, everybody has got such kind of maps uh, there, 150,000 maps are available. These are available easily uh, from the you know, survey agencies. And then you have a geological maps, you have forest cover maps, you have seismic zoning map. So do you delineate the catchment, which is a possible catchment is there? And then you try to generate what kind of uh, you know information you can draw from the Survey of India. You do the clustering, then you can also try to know what is the potential site based on all this. So I, as I go back, this is a simple map here. You see, this is a simple map. It's a topographical map. You can see a contour lines here, and I most of you have gone through in your class ninth or tenth science books. You know, where such maps are given. This is a topographical map. You can see here, these are the drains coming up here, you know, and these are the blacks, uh, that means they are seasonal, but then you see the blue one, so that means water flows around the year. And these are the elevation here, starting from 5,000 meter here, then it becomes uh, 2,300 uh, or something like that. So you can see here from 5,000, uh, I can't do, I can't develop there on such a mountain, it's a glacier. But certainly I can do a project here or here or here or here. As we go along with the catchment, my catchment start increasing, you see. My catchment is increasing. As I go along with this, so this becomes my increasing area. The more in increasing area, then better it is for my discharge. But then my, if I draw a L section of our debt, that becomes steeper, becomes milder. So one hand, I if I do a, uh, if I divert the water here, I have a higher uh, elevation, but then I have a smaller catchment. If I do it here, I have a higher catchment, but lower elevation. So I have to take a balance, I have to see that, and moreover, access to the higher reach is quite difficult. So these are the projects which in Bhutan, Nepal, even some of the reach of the Sri Lanka, and most of the reach of Pakistan and India, these are the one in Afghanistan, these are very common sites where people go like this. See, so I can develop one site. So I just divert here. I bring the power house here. I, I can bring it here, or I can put one more power house, or one more power house, or I can bring one power house. So these are the various options which could be available 
here you can see here i these are the my elevations here i can do it one here another one here another one here or i can straight forward i can bring it here all options available but then you have to see which is cost effective cost effectiveness any proposal has to be a cost effective because it's a product with electricity and you cannot put a power plant which is not cost effective you can see here this is a flat area punjab for example punjab is a flat land all of you know that i said that upper reaches which is connected to the hilly area all are the flat land so when i have a flat land i have the canals see i have the canals can you see and on every canal you see the dot so these dots are nothing but small hydropower site and when i say that that means the water which is being released here it is same water is going of course in the decreasing quantity because some water will be uh, going to meet the you know irrigation demand so what is reducing in the canal but then the slope is also there some falls are there so you can see there are plenty of sites available even in the flatter land through the canal so now this is a master plan of the punjab for small hydro but what advantage i got i have an advantage that i have inventory available for all the possible sites i have to provide a network for the grid i have to provide the allotment if i i want to do a develop a i'm a private sector i want to develop some sites i will like to see I can I do it all three sites in one go itself at one canal, so that I have give my reduced uh, administrative expenditure, and also it's easy to handle because the same philosophy I can use it here, I can use it here on the same canal because I know the canal behavior will be the same, the trash coming, sediment coming, all will be the same. In fact, it will be so it's easy to handle. Similarly. sites for other states you can see that there are plenty of sites which can be so these are the you know uh, these are the master plans for the various sites now look at here this is the one river right and here river they have developed the projects here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then this state become different So you can see that there are sites are there, but in between they are not developing. So there is a potential available in between. So can we think of those sites where the potential has not been developed by the other people? Now the very first question should come to your mind: Why they are not developing earlier? They may not be have that day when they were planning that time. Perhaps this project, these projects may not be economically viable. but as the as the my price of electricity is going high this may be viable today and today is the time when we try to have renewable energy to the extent possible wherever we can get it whether with wind solar biomass anything we want is uh, we are trying to extract that electricity now this i hope it will speak quite a lot this picture this graph where on the up x axis uh, y axis i have the percent of expenditure and in y x axis i have the time and this is the time when i actually start construction this is the time when i start execution implementation and this is a time which is actually preparatory work what are the preparatory work preparatory work are the one where you obtain the license you obtain the you know permissions you do the surveys you prepare the reports you go to the bank you try to select a contractor you take the clearances from various quarters you arrange the money and you are ready to execute here we are in 2 years if you are able to do in 2 years wonderful but in many instances this also takes 7 to 8 years so if you take so much at time in doing the preparatory work so that means your cost of the project will be going high and these are not the good indicators so country wide all the government try to reduce this time because if you want to have a private sector private sector cannot wait for 10 years 
I don't know whether you could attend yesterday's, uh, you know, this uh, World Hydro Congress where I spoke very clearly. The question was posed to me that why private sector is not there in hydropower in India, in PSP especially. And I mentioned that if you do a hydro project in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, if you take 15 years time, no private sector will come. And that's the reason private sector is not there in hydro much. In the small, of course, the small arts and they are doable. They are a small money and they are most of the small hydro comes in the private, but the large scale hydro, pump storage hydro, and not private sector is not much. So you can see that my expenditure is very small, maybe 10% up to this year. So I am still will not spend too much money. So I still can come back. I can I still leave the project. I can afford to leave the project at that time. If I find that project is going to become very expensive, I need not to have an expensive adventure. And I put my finger, I keep on burning. I cannot allow, I can execute. But when you start execution, then your money starts going into, and that is the time we cannot withdraw. That is the time when you cannot withdraw. If you withdraw, you will be not only burning your finger, you are burning yourself. So these are the, this is a very good thing to understand. This You will not believe this was developed in 1975 by USBR. And this holds good even today. This holds good so nicely today that it is almost that, except that this may be somewhere here, the lower one or higher one, all depends upon your uh, caliber. And if you are able to complete a project in two years time, that's a good time. You do. That's very good time. You are able to do. One and a half year is not common. And I would like to say in six months, I seen a project of 12 megawatt in the hilly area, completed in six months time. But then the guy has to be very smart. You have to get ready and the situation will be very specific. But two and a half year, one and a half year is quite common time to execute a small hydro project. This surveys, which yes, yesterday my colleague has already spoken that very kind, various kind of surveys you have to carry out, and that requires money and expertise. Each kind of expertise may not lie, even if you may have very smart engineer, you have a you educated in any top institution of the world, but when it comes to the surveys and investigation, that requires time and location and patience and procedure and standard. So all these things are required. You cannot just say, oh, this site is good. Yes, good, but measure it, survey it, investigate it, bring the data. That cannot replace on this. There are various types of reports are required. Uh, preferred report, many times they call preliminary report also. And detailed survey investigation report and feasibility report and detailed feasibility report. Like India, we call them detailed feasibility report, but most of the world talks about feasibility report. They are the same. Feasibility report is, I would say, the most global uh, word for, and this is the time when you can take the investment decision, and then engineering and construction drawings, then as built report. That how the project has been built up completely with the. This is like a improved version. You may have to change at site to take care of the site conditions. So those kind of things you may have to do it. There are risk will allotted, and and while planning, I must keep this consideration in my mind. What are these risks? What are these risks? Risks are, you know, I don't have long time series data because most of the small hydro is on small streams and small stream nobody bothers to measure the data, the shard data. Most of the time, the meteorological department or hydrological department or water department measures the discharge data on the large catchments, large, you know, rivers, not the small rivers. But the overall development of the small hydro will be in the small rivers. So here, in the catch, so this is a, a big issue. Join the risk because you can't afford to put so much of time and money in doing the geotechnical investigations, and that may you may get some surprise. So there may be some risk. Not necessarily. You may have, especially Himalayan countries. They know the Himalayas are young geology, and in the young geology, there are risks as much more compared to. Uh, uh, more, uh, you know, mature geology like Sri Lanka and southern part of India, where risk towards the geological are very low. Construction risk, there could be, you know, insurance may not be there, liquidity damage may not be there, 
expensive engineering designs may be there and a, any adequate uh, you know construction experience with the local contractors this is a very common thing as a friend you try to give the project or as a local pressure you try to give the contract construction contract to a local vendor and who may not have experience and guy who does not have experience he may not have the infrastructure he may not have the financial capabilities and then you put you in the dark your quality may not be maintained your time schedule may not be maintained and you may uh, get into the rough weather just because of this so there's a risk performance risk as you have you know uh, your performance is not there so you are not able to return the money to the bank so there is a performance risk if insurance covers fine but more normally insurance will not cover this risk of performance power equation is your power lines are broken they get damaged very frequently they get disturbed the grid fails very quickly and a small hydro often is you know pray for this why the pray because uh, my i am normally at the last mile of the grid i will be having connection with 11 kv 33 kv maybe maximum 132 kv of the, the capacity 25 megawatt or so i will be mostly connected with 11 and 33 kv and 11 and 30 kv are actually not the very good transmission line they are the distribution lines and they are on the tail end they are the end of the transmission i mean the distribution lines and their their failure rate are very high you can have a tree falling on them uh, like that so this is quite 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 common the financial risk you may not get the fund even if you get the fund fund is getting back and then you do not get the money from the sale on time if you don't get the money from the sale for the time from the electricity board or the, uh, you know to the uh, to whom you are selling the electricity so your bank will ask the money to in time if you don't pay the bank in time more than two times then they will call you is a non performing assets and that will give you trouble so site selection wise i would like to say narrow valley and i think i since i saw yesterday uh, professor singh was single was talking about the value here there are many thoughts are there there are both thoughts you know for the single must have mentioned that you should be narrow valley that's very really good and should be avoided but it should be there on the uh, you know convex side not the concave side and this is where i would like to say sometime this is also preferred sometime not all the time no it is little bit contrary what yesterday we were speaking on what i have written in the first floor if you want to have a sediment if your sediment is quite rate is quite heavy then let it become sediment tank the river should become a sediment tank and then you take the water easily so these are the situation even they will be little expensive much more expensive than this one because is, the length is short of the adavion weir but then you can provide a sediment tank or a desilting tank right here so this is very specific situation where one need to do normally i like to have the shortest one the smallest one i have desilting tank i should be able to do in a flatter land this should be free from cross drainage no slide zone should be there the slope should be stable similarly uh, for a four way tank i should have a flatter land i should have a filling of land should be avoided and slope should be stable and if i have a natural stream where i can send my spill water that will be wonderful otherwise i have to dissipate energy even because four way tank is at higher elevation i am with a higher elevation i need to you know expel this power water and accordingly uh, i if it's possible there pen stock yesterday talked about that its alignment should be there shortest length minimum band similarly power also easy assembly flatter ground above how flat level so the water should not reach, water should not uh, uh, reach to your place one of the project i saw which is a very funny project i mean uh, this is a funny situation i have a river here uh this is a dam i have power a, a, a project here uh, shp and there is a canal going for irrigation what happens during because of climate change everything happening now the discharge which used to be hfl 
and this was about HFL. Now this HFL has raised because flood has flood quantity have raised now because of climate change. Flood quantity is rising now. So what you will do with this? So what they done? They have a powerhouse. Earlier the water level was here. Now water level rises. So now they have to provide some kind of a sump here so that water level does not go there. So they have to provide a kind of a a ramp before the enter. Looks silly, but it is there. And in one of the place, in fact, uh, they had a possibility of dam failure. So what they did, they made a gate here, and they had a gate, not the normal gate. But these are very side specific solutions and situation. Are not not like you confused, but it should be above flight level. No doubt about that issue. This is the equation here. You can see a planning purpose here. I have a simple canal, you know, water is flowing here, and here I can use a channel, and I put a pump stock and going back here, and I also can use my a uh, tunnel here. I have advantage of tunnel that is a short, and further I don't need a land because I had to buy a land here. Here I needed to bind the line because I'm I'm beyond the bank. So I would like to ask this question during the debate that uh, whether you had to pay for the land here or not. This question awfully raised. I'm not using the land at all. Should I pay for the land here or not? It apparently looks like that I should not pay, but I'll debate on this. Similarly, you can do a cascade development. Where you can create, a, you know, projects and after that you can provide some runoff river schemes. So cascade developments can be there. You can also go for like a typical conventional one. You can also go along with the river, along with the river bed. But then you have to provide a sufficient, uh, you know, arrangement for the surge, surge tank, etc. And similarly, you can also go a little bit up and down. But you should not go up and down so much that my hydraulic gradient line. Hydraulic gradient line should always be above the this level. If hydraulic gradient line falls below this, you will be having the negative pressure. So in planning, I can do many things. I have done. There are many projects I have seen where people have gone like this, but they had to observe the that uh, hydraulic integrity. Hydraulic integrity of the system has to be respected and followed strictly. This cannot afford to do anything on this. You can also divert the water on the one bank. You can bring it again on the right bank and again come here. So you can do all the conditions. Not necessarily that you have to bring it here. There could be a situation where this land may not be available to you, or this piece of land is not easy to access. You cannot make it. Maybe some protected area. So can I go this way? Yes, I can do certainly. But there is some cost there by for the crossing it. But sometimes it's worth it. There are many projects where people have developed diversion on one side and they are developing the project on the other side. Like you can do it here itself. You can also bring it here, or if necessary, you can bring it here. So you can always do it here, whatever you feel like doing, as the situation demands. These are not very site specific. They are, these are very site specific uh, situations, and they are the solution also site specific. But I would like to mention, as a planning purpose, these technical considerations should be there that you have to do a project in the most sustainable manner. This is the key word. It has to be sustainable. Today, hydropower, big or small, micro or mini, it has to be sustainable. Without that, it cannot, uh, it cannot uh, uh, sustain. It cannot, uh, it cannot be executed today. The today's situation is that you had to be uh, sustainable in nature. You can also cross some river when you have a transition lines canals. You have to pass through the canal. You have to pass through the aqueduct, or you can put a pipeline. All kind of options you can pass. But while doing it pipeline, uh, when you're doing it, that you have to see that hydraulic integrity of the water system is followed. If you do not follow, the water will not pass through. There is a project in India, very close to Bangladesh, where they did this work. This is about 50 meter wide. They put a pipe here, but they did not put enough submergence of the pipe. So what happens when the water goes? 
it has a lot of air it has water formation and the desired quantity is never able to reach here no section everything is there so hydraulic integrity was not maintained so a 15 megawatt project has never given more than 12 megawatt project no equipments are fantastic equipment uh, construction is fantastic but here this hydraulic integrity was never respected so they perhaps are doing or they will do sometime Uh, the canal based projects are to be located in the Davos channel. I explained it quite a lot and I should have approximately proximity to the substations and the dam based schemes again that there should be suitable sites and then also their possible location cooling water return channel of thermal power plants. In India, let me tell you those plants which are open loop systems, we have installed thermal on even on the return channel on the cooling water channel. Some of the SHP plants in India. So, if those plants are there in any of the country, being the Bangladesh, be the you know uh, Sri Lanka, or Pakistan, Afghanistan, or thermal power channel where water is drawn, and if it is open loop system, open loop system means the water is being taken from the water source and being sent to the water source, not like cooling tower. In cooling tower, there is a closed loop system, so they take uh, chances of hydropower, velocity turbine, kinetic turbine, low head turbines. So these are, I'll be now moving a little quickly. These are typical run day out. I will be moving fast on this. You can see here the surveys, you can see the tunnels are there, you know, tunnels are being constructed, maybe in one line, maybe typical uh, few lines you can see here. This is my divergent and I can do this very typically. You can see there, these are roads and I do the divergent here. One, two and three. And then this is a power house here. These are all real sites. You can see there, all you can are there, diversion we had, and then one, two, desilting tank, or then one, two, three. In fact, there are many bands, not very good site, but people have done it. You can see here, even many times, there is a possibility of that you had to cross uh, this kind of thing. So maybe I had to use uh, a pipe over there instead of tunnel, all kind of combination possible. You can also do one uh, like this. Similarly, I can also, this is a typical, um, you know, trench wear base, which is very common nowadays in the hilly Himalayan belt. Uh, they are very common. And also I can draw two sources, one water from this source and one water from this water source. This is a common four bit tank and this power house, this is the power house, you know, four bit tank and power house. So I want to be drawing at two places and bring it the same place. I can also bring from third also, but if I have to bring third, but if I have to put a cross drain work also. These are plenty of such projects there, and these are the another type of layout. These are the typical canal base where you can have power house inside the water or the river. I would like to skip because these are uh, these are typical existing dams. You can have a concrete dam, you can have earth spill dam, you can have a canal fall. So these are the different low head machines are there. You can also overflow, you know. These kind of projects nowadays not more constructed, but these are some of the projects which have been constructed in Eastern Europe, sometime in 50s, 60s, 70s, but no, nowadays uh, nobody put like this, you know. But these are also possible. These are the possible layers. This is a project like uh, has been executed. Also, you can put in a, uh, a siphon mode and you can put this in, say the water is flowing. So I can take the water and put a turbine or I can put a turbine here also. You see, this is the fall here, 20 meter fall, 5 cubic meter of water. Should I do that? Why not? This is a canal fall. You know, this is a spilling. So instead of spilling, the powerhouse, uh, the, you can have a unit or small units. This is a, a Nigerian picture I took long back. This is what yesterday I shown you. You can have any kind of route. You can also crossing. If this is a penstock crossing the drain, and then this is a powerhouse. You can see here, and then this is a tailwater. So tailwater again become a tank and this is going to the next power house. So it's a, it's a cascade scheme. This is a cascade scheme. So this is this has become what happened. Sorry, I think something gone wrong.
What has happened in this? Not sure. Yes. Yes, you can see here, this has become a, a, a four by tank for the next project. This is a five megawatt project, and a five megawatt project here. So you can see how the people, and this is the where they will drink the water, tank, making this thing, so nice. Such projects are easy to doable, and these are have to be, you have to plan it, you have to thought of, you have to think on these lines. Because they did not have the money in the big one, so once they had done it, after five years, they did another project. Same part. You can see here nicely, no disturbance in the river, but they are able to withdraw the water to a trench here. You can see here, this is a crossing by pipe, you can having a cross tunnel. You can see here, this is my pipe and I put a gen uh, my generator be, uh, below this one. So it doesn't require much space. I can bring my penstock right here in the bottom and making a fast turbine and the water going here. I can also do it in other ways. I can bring it on the top and then bring it like here and go there. So both options are there. You can see here. So all possibilities are there on that layout. You can also put a rubber dam here. And in the rubber dam, you can see I have a power house here. And I was filling, and then this is my powers. So I created a small two meter or three meter of head, and I would like to see such possibilities are there on small streams in many of in them in Sri Lanka. In uh, uh, I won't say because Bangladesh, I really don't know that whether you have the small streams, but these are quite possible in many areas of uh, our Sark region. And there, I keep on promoting this one very heavily because uh, you can create two to three meter of head. This is a, this was a river in uh, somewhere, and then uh, no, I know this place uh, very well. I had been to many times there, and you can see this is so nicely. You can also do a project without a building, no building, only like a, you know lids are there. You want to pick up the equipment, you can pick it up by a mobile crane. No need of picking because equipment does not, you know, you don't need to maintain the equipment every day. And you can say such kind of compactness is there. You can see this picture is from a project in Sri Lanka near Gale. You can see how nicely a project has been planned. Now, elephant will come, elephant will say green. He will not feel unhappy or it's a red or yellow. <laughs> it's a green. So it's very well merged into the environment nice uh, in a roof so these are the some of the good planner uh, you know uh, you can see here how clean the project is can you think of how clean project you can walk with the white socks here in fact my my colleague my professor colleague was there he asked me to walk through the uh, you know white socks no dust so projects of hydro when you plan you have to see each and every part it's safety, it's environment concern, it's a, you know, merging with the local uh, architecture and culture. Uh, there are, this, uh, we have a state in Sikkim where all the power plant, we will have a roof, looks like a house or residence. You know, it doesn't like a, a Pakka concrete structures. You see, this is how the project can be there. You know, how beautiful project can be there nicely with the spillway and uh, looks very nice. A good example here. You can see this is a very good example, very nicely Carmen. It's only 18 megawatt, uh, 24 megawatt, three units of 8 megawatt each. It's in near Mysore in Bangalore. There's such a nice project there. You can see also such a messy project also. Can you see? Very messy project. Looks like a garage, not like powerhouse. How bad they look. And they are not very old. This has been constructed in 2005, and this is constructed in 2005. And I visited in 2006. This I visited in 2009. Compared to this, similar turbine, similar turbine, same capacity, similar situation, how nicely they keep. So when you invite the policy maker, the policy maker, if he looks many pictures like this, he will never be encouraged. 
your investor will never be encouraged to do like this. If you encourage him, it will be encouraged on this. So planning has to be there. Of course, there is a multidisciplinary approach you need to have. Civil, electrical, mechanical, electronics, everything you have in a small hydro, we can't afford to have individual experts. You need to be a multitasker. You need to be a multidisciplinary expert in this subject. Then only small hydro can be there because you cannot afford uh, those kind of things. And also, the projects normally small hydro will be in the remote areas where very high, ha very high salaried or very high, you know, highly educated or uh, top people may not like to live there. So you had to manage with the local people. I think one yesterday, uh, Tiagi was trying to mention you that you need to train the local people there to the extent. And let me tell you, hydropower is not a rocket science, so that's not a big problem. You need to motivate the persons, make it train local people, maybe at a diploma level or technician, not necessarily that you need to have a engineering degree or a postgraduate degree. Multidisciplinary specialties at different uh, level is, uh, is required, you know. So this is what I wanted to present into the in this planning, uh, you know, course and uh, plus slot. And I now invite you for the, you know, questions and discussions. So what do you, Mr. Podal? I you may like to, or I I I request that people come with with the. Uh, with their, uh, you know, uh, they should come with the, their questions now. Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Porter, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, yes, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah. Dear participants, please unmute yourself and please ask your queries. Otherwise, sir, you can pick it randomly. Okay, I'll do that. No, in <laughs> fact, uh, Mr. Soman was uh, has said into the chat box that he wants to show some photograph, and I would uh, I request him that why not he shows it? Let him show it here, Mr. Soman. Abub Soman. Uh, Mr. Ram Pandey, you want to ask it? Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Professor. Good afternoon, Professor. Very good afternoon. Sir, I just want uh, a little more clarification about planning by cluster approach. You discussed a little about that, but uh, I didn't get the point exactly. So I just want to know a little more about that planning of by cluster approach. Cluster means suppose I have the country or a state or a district where yeah. our, you know, projects are there on different rivers, different districts, district states, and I have money for say 10 projects. So one thing is I do one project in one state, another project in another state, that's one. But that way, I am actually doing the 10 projects, but they are being done it differently. My administrative cost, my travel cost, my everything, data cost, everything becomes, you know, 10 times. But if I have, say, 10 projects in on one river basin, where my linear distances are also, uh, uh, you know, uh, ex overlapping, they are like extended, like one is a 10 kilometer, another is another 10 kilometer, another 10 kilometer. So in one go, I will be able, and same river, same basin, then my behavior of my water, my quantity of water, my data collection, everything become common, you know. That becomes like a, my, my cost on the data, cost on administrator, and cost on my processing is divided almost in all 10. So my cost of the project, and moreover, if I have to create infrastructure for the road, infrastructure for the power equation line, I need to make only one. Not that for every 10 projects or 10 different district, different, different cities or different district, state, I have to make every one. My cost of infrastructure becomes 10 times. So that's called cluster approach. And I would like to say in many of the states in India, this cluster approach have been encouraged and people have been allotted. I repeat, people have been allotted three sites for example, in the beginning, three sites per person on a cluster approach basis. Okay, you have three projects you want to do, you do it in this basin. One, two, three. Let's not come here so that you are able to do. So that's a good approach when you have to do a plenty of the project. But then if you want to do only few projects, then politically, administratively, people would like to say to constituency of mine, I buy constituency AML, you know, like that, so that way, but then 
financing is not disturbed but that is also another way to give a good uh, insight that people can you know see the uh, uh, you know advantage of these projects uh, collectively yes mr seven i hope uh, uh, ram pande you are uh, yeah, yeah yeah thank you uh, professor clear on this okay very good yes mr mahbub yeah sir thank you thank you for the wonderful presentation um Uh, you know bangladesh is almost a flat land and here we have a large uh, hydropower plant uh, installed in 1962 uh, when it was uh, pakistan but there were a lot of issues regarding uh, ecology and uh, community displacement so uh, now the potentials micro hydro projects potentials all are those in that place uh, like in the southeastern part of the so, concerns in the community uh, are existing so all the micro hydro power plants uh, are with potentials like 5 kilowatt to 50 kilowatt so when we are going to do uh, doing uh, such micro projects uh, one projects have already been installed but that was not uh, duly planned yet it was discussed vastly in UNDP inside the government power ministry etc now we want to continue with further projects with proper design community agreement and everything for that reason we have to take uh, community concern first that's why we were discussing for last year, one year thoroughly yet uh, we got no result we have to actually show them real projects pictures videos and i believe they will agree and uh, we want to actually visit some small and micro hydro projects outside and bring them with us to show them how this projects work how the community being benefited etc so is it possible to help us with uh, the uh, images and, and videos and make uh, like excursion visit uh, in the uh, outside bangladesh uh, we, we will happily uh, can visit that place with our family. i would like to say this is like a, uh, when you talk about the bilateral we talk about this Uh, i would like to say uh, most of indian power producers small hydro producers always welcome the visitors they always welcome to the visitors and they would like to also uh, you know uh, so in any case you have any i i thought you were going to show some photograph of your site i i thought in the chat uh, i had an impression that you want to show a yes, photograph sir, of your sir, site i have i have some images uh, i so can show why don't you show it i thought that because we this point you have mentioned yesterday also Yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, mehboob you can since you have the email ids with us so we can always talk it uh, you know one to one because we let's not spend some time with others uh, where all of us may not be interested in 5 kilo or 10 kilo what but uh, we can do that uh, you know one to one uh, but you please share your photograph so we can talk something on that immediately sure sir but in meanwhile if any other pies please raise hand if anybody anybody wish to speak uh from uh, you know and if you have any female candidate in our group i will welcome them to also speak because so far in the last two day ever uh, last since one day uh, we have female participants are very highly encouraged to speak and then mr chaminda has uh, raised the point i'll uh, request him to just wait for that uh, you know uh, mehboob is showing something else. are you showing mehboob Otherwise, meanwhile, Mr. Chaminda, you can go ahead with the question. I I I may okay. share the images and details in. Yeah, you show it. You show email, it. Email. Oh, in email you want, or you you, you want share. to show it here? We permit you to show. No issue. Okay. Okay. Let. Uh, ah, you let, try. Yeah, meanwhile, I like to request. Ah, uh, uh, Bulbul. Your name is. I mean, Bulbul is beautiful name. I mean, <laughs> because Bulbul is our uh, one of the most favorite uh, bird. So oh, yes, Mr. Uh, Rahman Bulbul, please go ahead. You have some question, but then I will request uh, Chamina Chaminda to speak after that. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you, sir. A excellent presentation yesterday and today. Um, in Bangladesh, uh, last last Mr. Mahbub Shumam say in Bangladesh the flat area, some places with some hill. Yeah. The my portion, you are the most experienced worldwide. I know the uh, Orun sir. uh in bangladesh is a can the uh, design this is the tropical rubber drum or the canal pole and uh, yes, we do that and for you rubber dam is the most appropriate uh, uh, dam structure on a canal or even otherwise 
and at the canal fall yeah to yes canal fall means if you already have a canal fall you want to divert for your power house because i remember about the 18 sites are there in bangladesh canals you have about 18 sites on the barrages and weirs so they are uh, i hope you must be having a list otherwise i can dig out my uh, data bank and i can share with you but uh, the rubber dam is a beauty that uh, it can work with the water level automatically go up and down go up and down that's one but again a little bit security issue is there should nobody should go and puncture it by a bullet or a by a axe you know so these are the small things which has to be taken care but nowadays bullet proofs are coming so rubber dams are coming with a bullet proof also this is possible yes mr chaminda please thank you sir yes uh, professor my concern was like in in, in a canal uh, there's uh, due to elevation difference there's certain flow rate uh, it has been designed uh, so this is all about energy and all that so when we are tapping energy uh, will there be a flow rate compensation happening uh, downstream or has has that been practically observed as an expert what is your impression like ideally we see if you take energy out there will be a drop no because you are using the drop canal fall is a drop that means that energy is being wasted so what you are doing you using that energy only in okay. fact this question comes when you are using flowing energy kinetic energy when you are using kinetic energy this question comes there oh you are taking out the electricity how the water will flow yes certainly in fact when you put a kinetics over there the water built up will be there but when the uh, uh, there will be wake formation and there will be accelerated by a velocity and after that it will take the velocity which has been to normally so there will be certain maybe two three times of diameter you will not be having the normal velocity there but it's only kinetic but here you are talking about uh you know the canal fall so canal fall uh, all over the world canal falls are being used uh, you know i would like to say the first hydroelectric project in india and pakistan uh on canal has been on near my town and one is in lahore you know one is in lahore and lahore that project is called ganga ram power house of i think 1 megawatt or something like two units on a canal there and one is it in jammu and one is in my town my town is the oldest one it was 1925 i repeat 1925 and that i think the jammu and lahore happened in 1930s but these are the beautiful plan i don't know whether they are running or not but uh, india is running because uh, uh, in fact our our institution used to get the electricity during those days from there yes the sasista you have a question here Yes, uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, I have, I have a little ca clarification. Uh, 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 do you have any idea about the plant fact of that uh, installed uh, hydropower in uh, uh, canals? Plant factors. PLF, plant load factor. Uh, plant factors uh, or the payback period. Yeah, 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 the, I, I, yeah. I understand. I understand. Can I tell you if it is? A, I have a plant where we have more than hundred percent. Can you think of? Can I imagine on that? because the water is always too much there in the canal capacity and that that particular plant runs on the overloading many times but the overloading i don't recommend i would say the plant load factor typically uh, ranges from 25% to 60% okay sir 25% to 60% normally but the canal if you are running all the time full like a, if you are having a, a a cooling water channel of a thermal power plant you have a drinking water channel that does not vary the water always goes there you know always constant water will go for drinking constant water will go for thermal power projects or you know some drinking so uh, I, that time your plf will be very high because you have constant water and hydro machine never want to take the rest all machines have been designed to run without common full stop for 5 years 10 years no worry you have only to stop it if your your power line is bad or something goes wrong or your you know you had a silt erosion or something you know fundamentally goes wrong otherwise hydro power generators since they are very low rpm they are i mean uh, they are designed for to work without any rest thank you so i think uh, we have no more raising hands so mr uh, podal we can uh, oh yeah we have ringen dorji mm -hmm. 
Yes, Mr. Dorji, go ahead. Uh, We'd like to see your face also, if you can put your video on. Dorji? Uh, yes, good. Go ahead and yeah. ask it. Uh, I'm Rinzin Dorji from the Duke Green Power Corporations. Uh, in the presentations, you are mentioning about the compensations, you know? For uh, uh, for constructing the uh, hit risk, uh, the underground. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So so I think uh, there were some issues uh, regarding the, the tunnel constructions. Uh, railway, I think uh, some tunnel constructions yeah, that uh, that took place in the Nagaland, where they have to bear the compensation. So it's similar kind of uh, situations in terms of the development of the hydropower also. Yes. In fact, now what Government of India did it, that uh, now they started asking some price for using the, you know, using the facility. It's not very high, but there is a sub cost has, been, has to be paid because if power sector comes, everybody wants their share. <laughs> everybody mm -hmm. wants to jump on this. As someone you want to show something in India, yes, now we have to pay something, but not like uh, uh, they are uniform rates now. Mm -hmm. Like a charge, okay, for using that space. So there's the area, how much area you're using, right? Mm -hmm. And that face area and what the length. So you have to, that some calculations are there and they are being charged. Mm -hmm. And there was a very funny thing which was happening in uh, uh, Kerala in southern mm -hmm. India where, uh, you know, one project was stalled for one and a half year mm -hmm. uh, because the person who went to the court and court said, yes, this land mm -hmm. belonged to him. Even it was 100 years below. And the guy, the Kerala government came, then he went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court got, got, got relief from him. In the other way, that one nonsense was going on, you know, and the project was not taking off because it looks nonsense. But then I think now the government of India has said that, okay, some money will be paid. But that money will be not paid to individual. It will pay to the government. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no individual can claim that uh, land belongs to him even. And he was saying, claiming that up to... Uh, up to diameter, I have a you know claim over the center of the gravity of the uh, center of earth. I have the claim that nonsense he was talking. And mm -hmm. courts has a help a little bit in the beginning, but nowadays that's not an issue. Yes, Mr. Suman, you want to show a picture because I think now we are running out of time because I already jumped by eight minutes. If you want to share the photographs, just share quickly, otherwise, we need to close it. Uh, move quickly, please. I can't see except the road. Yeah, anything show? You can unmute yourself if you have to, want to speak. Otherwise, you move the next picture, please. It is nothing but on the left side, we see a little hump. Maybe you may have a water tank over there. I don't know whether left or right. You're not able to speak. Yeah, sir, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to the next picture, actually. Uh, so. Sometimes 5 kilowatt takes more time than 500 kilowatt or 5 megawatt. 5 megawatt takes lesser time than 5 kilowatt. So can you see the images? Yeah, we can see that a little bit. Yes. Yes, sir. This is the yes. location. Very good. Very good picture. Uh, what I would suggest, uh, so, uh, Mehboob, you share me with these pictures and then let me work on them. I'll come back to you in one of the session. And then the okay. policy will come out because we have enough time. Let's not hold the whole class right okay, now. Okay, sir. I think you say, share with me and also share your note and share your concern. So I will take you it as a case study in one of the session which we'll be having either on the last day or say, uh, the second last day. Okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. Right, right. So, uh, Mr. Pardal? Yes, sir. We can okay, close the class. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your excellent presentation. And thank you very much to the audience who raised the question. And our Professor Arun Kumar absolutely nailed it. So, uh, now we our launch break is start. So, after...
maybe at uh, two o'clock at PGT and right after one hour we'll meet again. Thank you.